Hello Nidorinars and Nidorinos, it is King Nido here and we are finishing off round one of this season with the Battle of Unova because it is the Verbank Plasma hosting the Castellia Pinches and last season both these sides fell just short of individual goals, Verbank Plasma being runner up in this season, the Castellia Pinches just missing out on Victory Road but let us know in the comments below who you think is going to win this contest, will it be the Poison Types, will it be the Bug Types, let's go! Three. will be the boldness of that toxicity going up against the naughtiness of these mighty bugs as it is Heracross and Levani starting out for the Castellia Pinches. It is Gengar and Brute Bonnet starting off for the Verbank Plasma as Brute Bonnet is the Terrastal Drafty after a very impressive season on the Grass type side. Last time around Gengar coming across from the Grass type team and Levani actually making their debut in the Poker Type League but Gengar with that speed control goes for the Absorb onto Heracross, which is not very effective on the fighting bug type. Levania though, with the vacuum wave, not very effective there on the terrestrialized Brute Bonnet. Heracross looking to follow it up, going with the bulk up. It is going to boost that physical attack as well as that physical defense, but that physical attack is a base 125. The scratch low from Brute Bonnet on to Levani, gets an okay strike there, but Gengar's gonna follow up with the crunch. This is gonna do such minimal damage there to Heracross, not very effective, and Levani looking to capitalize, goes for the triple kick, but unfortunately goes for Gengar, so it just phases straight through with all three of those kicks, and then we get the floral healing from Heracross, actually helping out Brute Bonnet. It is gonna restore it back to full strength, not that it's lost much health so far, but why would you help out the opposition? The Grassy Glide in response as a thank you, not very effective there on Heracross. Gengar with the stun spell, but it goes for Heracross, who's able to avoid that attack, and this allows Levani to go with the Hyper Beam. Great hit there onto Brute Bonnet, and Heracross with the chance to follow it up yet again. It's going to boost that physical defense, this time going for the hard, and it's going to be able to take those physical strikes. Brute Bonnet, though, with the ingrain, it's going to plant those roots real nice and early. We've actually seen it do this strategy before in previous matchups, so it is going to be restoring health in between turns from the nutrients in those roots, and Gengar is going to go for the side beam here. Gets a really good hit there onto Levani as it has to recharge. Heracross looking to do its part, though, goes with the Thunder Wave. Onto Brute Bonnet, trying to slow it down, although it's already slowest on the field, but this may also make it unable to move due to that paralysis. Brute Bonnet, though, is successful in shaking that up and going with the topsy turvy, reversing those stat changes that have happened for Heracross, which is great because those defenses have just been lowered as well as that boosted attack. Gengar here could capitalize, but instead it goes for the Cotton Guard, so it is going to boost its own defense a great deal. Levani, though, is going to go for the Lust of Purge. This will be super effective on the Poison type Brute Bonnet, but Brute Bonnet actually is able to withstand that attack much better than I was expecting, and we get the Head Smash follow-up from Heracross onto Gengar. Gets a really good hit there, but there is a little bit of recoil damage for Heracross. Brute Bonnet, yet again, shaking off that Paralysis, is going to go for the Blast Burn, and Levani is eliminated with that super effective move. I do not think there was any chance of Levani outlasting that Blast Burn as Brute Bonnet, continuing to have its health restored thanks to those planted roots. Now out for the Castello Pinches, it is Volcarona, but Gengar does still have speed control going with the Night Slash now. Yet again, not very effective on Heracross, but does have the lower defenses now. Remember, the Blue Flare from Volcarona is going to be avoided by Gengar. Heracross now is going to go with the Eerie spell. They want Gengar off this field. This will be super effective, and it gets the elimination. Gengar has just been taken out with a critical hit, but that Cursed Body ability has been activated. This is going to cause Heracross on the field to struggle, which is great because they've lowered its attack as well as Brute Bonnet does have to recharge, but it does still get its health restored thanks to those roots very intelligently planted so early on as now out comes the Alolan. Muck onto the side for the Verbank Plasma. The Solar Blade set up here by Volcarona. It is going to absorb light on this turn, but it's not going to be very effective no matter who it hits. Heracross is going to go for the struggle, going for Muck, and there is that recoil damage. Muck going for its first move of the season. Goes with the Worry Seed onto Volcarona. Really clever play to get that Flame Body here off the Bug Fire type because the Plasma do not want that burn status condition. Not the Brute Bonnet has to worry about it, but unfortunately it has to worry about that Paralysis, which has just prevented it from being able to move. However, you still see it feeling the effects of those planted roots as it is going to be on the receiving end of the Solar Blade from Volcarona. 
and it is able to withstand that move really well, not very effective there, but here is Heracross, still struggling, still going for Muck, and there is that recoil damage, taking it out of that of the matchup, that cursed body, very crucial for the Verbank Plasma this season, as the corrosive gas here from Muck is going to burn up, or corrode away, sorry, those Leper Berries of both Brute Bonnet and Volcarona, as Brute Bonnet does shake off its paralysis, it's going to go for the match, it gotcha going for just Volcarona all by itself here, very minimal damage, but here is that health yet again, continuing to be restored by Brute Bonnet, this time thanks to the match of Gotcha, but then that follow-up of the planted roots. This is the benefit of going with those planted roots so early. It's doing so well in this matchup as out comes Cleavor for the Castellia pinches. And up roller is performed by Volcarona. Gets a really good hit there onto Muck as it is causing that uproar and Cleavor gonna follow it up with the court change, but unfortunately there's no entry hazards to be moved, so that will fail. This allows Muck to go for the tar shot onto Volcarona, which is actually going to make it weaker to fire type moves as well as lowering that speed stat and it normally would resist those fire type moves thanks to that fire typing but here comes the flower trick this will not be very effective however it is a critical hit as always you have to wonder can brute bonnet potentially get on the Rowan, uh, sorry, the Oak All Stars yet again this season as Cleavor is going to set up for a Solar Beam. We saw the Solar Blade already. We're going to see the Solar Beam as Cleavor is going to absorb the light, but that uproar is continuing. Volcarona going for Brute Bonnet. Gets a really good hit there too as the Circle Throw is going to send Volcarona back to the bench. It's not very effective there from Muck, but it prevents that uproar from continuing and out in its place comes Fortress, who was drafted to the Castellia Pinches away from the steel types as Brute Bonnet yet again feeling the effects of that paralysis, but still those planted roots. I cannot stress how crucial that is for keeping the Pokemon in this matchup as the Solar Beam is going to be finished off by Cleavor, but Muck heavily tanks that move and allows it to go for the Pain Split, a really kept clever play here because Cleavor had not lost any health yet. Fortress going for its first move of the match goes with the Nightshade on to Muck, gets a really good hit there. And Brute Bonnet is going to respond, sorry, with the Acid, but it goes, it is not going to affect Fortress because of that part Steel typing, however, it is going to get some okay damage there on to Cleaver, we'll getting the critical hit, in fact, not leaving any poison status condition, though, as that health continues to be restored, and Cleaver is going to go with the Struggle Bug, that same type attack bonus actually puts Muck into Knockout, Rancher is going to respond with the Aerial Ace, that rock type and preventing it from being super effective. And this allows Fortress to go for the Calm Mind. It is going to boost those special stats. But this sturdy Pokemon is much more physical. So this is just is just going to make it much more well-rounded for this matchup. And it is so hard to take down. As the Fiery Dance from Brute Bonnet is going to eliminate Cleaver from this matchup. You have to think maybe it should have gone for Fortress. As it does get the special attack boost in the process. Because that might have been able to take Fortress to within knockout range. As Brute Bonnet still having its health restored as Volcarona comes back out onto the field here. And it is going to go for the high jump kick to finish off Muck, who has that dark type in as well that makes it weaker than if it was just a Cantonian Muck. The soft ball does fail for Fortress, who is still at full strength. This allows Brute Bonnet to go for the Whirlwind. It's going to send Volcarona yet again back to the bench. And we know that the last Pokemon now for the Castello Pinches is Yed Mega making its debut as well in the Poketype League and it has that speed boost ability as well as now out comes Venusaur making its debut for the Verbank Plasma but the how from Yen Mega, it's already the quickest on the field, so that speed boost is quite relevant, but does get an attack boost from the Hell, as does Fortress. Venusaur, though, is going to go with the Darkest Lariat for Yen Mega. Gets a good hit there as well, as Fortress does look to respond. It's going to go for the Sweet Scent. And that beautiful smelling Sweet Scent does lower the evasiveness of the Poison types, making them easier targets for the Bug types. And we'll get a Future Sight being set up by Brute Bonnet, who has been in this matchup since the very beginning, foreseeing that attack for Fortress. Still having that health restored, surely it would have been eliminated by now if it weren't for that, as that speed boost ability does come into play for Yen Mega. Not that it impacts the speed control. The Dragon Rush, though, comes down hard onto Venusaur from that speed boosted Yen Mega. Venusaur is going to respond with an eruption. This is going to be super effective for both Yen Mega and Fortress. Are barely able to hold on. They're both in knockout range. The entrainment here from Fortress. 
on to Brute. Bonnet is going to change that Protosynthesis into a Sturdy, and that Sturdy will no longer matter because Brute Bonnet's already taken damage. It's going to go for the Acid Armor, looking to boost its defense here on the field, which is already base 99, getting it over that 100 mark, as well as its health being restored yet again, and there is that speed boost. No impact in this matchup. Inmech is already so quick. It's going to go for the Earth Power, though. This might be able to get the Elimination, and it does. Brute Bonnet has been eliminated from this match and it actually levels the playing field. We are down to three Pokemon on both sides. It seemed like the Verbalink Plasma were in control, but the Cal Castellia Pinchers are holding their own Venus, although going to try for an easy elimination, connecting with both Yen Mega and Fortress. Fortress is able to hold on. It has its special attack level, but Yen Mega is eliminated and we know that Volgrana is coming back out onto the field. Fortress needs to go for something big. It's going to go for the bounce. It's going to spring up high into the sky. If it goes for Venusaur, this would be super effective thanks to that grass typing and it's able to avoid the future site in the process that was crucial it's kept it in the match out comes Volcarona out comes Overquill with that intimidated ability lowering the attack of both Volcarona and Fortress that lowered attack of Fortress could be crucial to keep Venusaur in this matchup as Venusaur has its attack lowered a great deal, the Zen Headbutt from Overquill is avoided by Fortress. This is going to allow Fortress to potentially capitalize, but first Venusaur goes for the Slash. Very clever. Going for Volcarona gets the critical hit as well, but the Flame Body ability has come back, and Venusaur is on the receiving end. It has been burned, but it's also on the receiving end of the bounce. It needs to hold on, but it doesn't. It's eliminated with that super effective move. It is a 2v2 matchup. And the last Pokemon for the Verbank Plasma, it is Toxtricity coming out, but Volcarona with the speed control goes for the Darkest Lariat. It's going to go for Overquill, not very effective. Overquill tanks that move and responds with the Electro Ball, taking Fortress out of this matchup. Very clever play. Toxtricity looks to follow it up here, trying to get that victory for the Verbank Plasma. Goes with the slam, and they complete the huge play. The Verbank Plasma reigns supreme over Unibur for this season. Or if these two sides are able to make victory road, it and they may meet again then, but until then, Nidorinas and Nidorinas, fantastic play by both sides. Next round, the Plasma will be going up against the Lumios Yellows, whereas the Pinchers next round will be going up against the Hammerlock Draconids. And until then, Nidorinas and Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below who you thought was the best on field. And if you enjoyed what you saw here, please leave a like, share, subscribe. But more importantly, always remember, you are awesome. And I'll see you when you see me.